what is going on guys here we go another breakdown coming at you guys all right i'm just banging these out for you guys i want you guys to score a high in the mcat okay and i want you guys to realize that the mcat is not that hard it's not that hard okay so i'm gonna break this down i'm gonna show you guys how to understand the passage i'm gonna show you guys how to interpret this you know these details here how to make them all make sense i'm gonna show you guys how to pick the best answer choice all right i'm gonna show you guys everything so before i do that do the passage on your own first okay so pause it whenever you need to whenever you need to you can pause it all right this is the first question answer it pick your pick your answer write it down this is 49 pick your answer write it down this is 50 pick your answer write it down this is 51 pick your answer write it down 52, pick your answer, write it down, guys. You got this. Hopefully, you guys get them all right. We'll see what happens. If not, you will learn how to get them all right. Let's begin breaking this down. Tetrodotoxin, TTX, is a potent neurotoxin produced by bacteria, often those living in a symbiotic relationship with another organism. TTX has been detected in Pufferfish, newts, red algae, crabs, starfish, octopus, and many types of worms. Depending on the species, TTX can be used as either a predatory venom or a defensive biotoxin to ward off predation. Okay, I'm not highlighting anything yet because I don't really see anything that kind of pops out at me. Okay, it's all like a right, it's like I'm reading a textbook, really, like it's nothing too crazy right now. Despite its high toxicity, okay, here we go. Some species have developed resistance to TTX, a phenomenon that is currently under investigation. The toxin can enter the body of victim by inhalation, ingestion, injection, or through scraped skin. Injection is the most dangerous. Okay, I'm highlighting this. Whenever they have some extreme things coming out to you, like whenever they say, out of everything, this protein is different because blah, blah, blah. Or they say, um, an importance of this protein is blah, blah, blah. Or if they say injection is the most dangerous, you got to highlight that. That's important stuff, okay? Here we have the figure. We don't look at the figure. We only look at the figure when the question asks us to. We don't want to waste time trying to interpret it. Let's keep going. Tetrodotoxin binds to the fast voltage-gated sodium channel at the extracellular pore opening of the ion channel. Important information here. They're telling us exactly how this drug works. Okay, you should know that. Two types of voltage-gated sodium channels have been discovered in humans. The tetrodotoxin-sensitive voltage-gated sodium channel, so this is the sensitive here to this drug, and the tetrodoxin-resistant voltage-gated sodium channel, so this is the one that's resistant to tetrodoxin. Easy, guys. Like, I feel like sometimes when I talk and do these passages, I'm like, this is this, this is this. I don't see where it's hard. Okay, tetrodotoxin binds to TTXS Na plus CS, so the sensitive one, with a binding affinity of 5 to 15 nanomolarity. Okay, let me highlight this. That's his binding affinity. Oh my god, come on, highlight. Okay, in order to determine the tissue expression pattern of TTX sensitive and TTX resistant, Several samples were collected from laboratory rats and used to perform reverse transcription polymerase chain reaction. Important stuff here. This is something that you've seen in your content review, so you should know exactly how this is working and how this happens, okay? So what are they doing here? To reiterate, I mean, to, in other plain words, they have this sensitive and they have this resistant channel. They want to see, hey, where is this sensitive channel in specific tissues? Where is this resistant channel in tissues where is the sensitive channel in tissues where are they where are they that's simple so they perform the rt pcr an rt pcr is when you get rna and use reverse transcriptase and make cdna from that rna that's simple primers ja12 and ja13 were used to amplify an exon specific to the ttxr na plus c so ja123 these are for the resistant channel. 
Okay, and primers NS42 and NS43 were used to amplify a different exon specific to the TTXS. Okay, so these two, N242 and NS43 are used for the sensitive channel, okay? And JA12 and JA13 are used for the resistant channel. And they're primers, okay? Each PCR was run with a water-only control where no template was added. And YA97 and YA98 primers were used to amplify an exon that is expressed in both. Okay, so the Ys are for both. And here they give you a table. We only look at the table when the question asks us to. Okay, here's 48. Simple, uh, pretty simple passage, guys. I don't see where it's hard. I don't see where it gets complicated. This is an MCAT for you. And this is a third-party FL, so it's known to be harder than the regular AMC FLs. Okay. TTX producing bacteria have been found in symbiotic relationships with. Oh my god, come on, this is so easy. All right, what do we got here? Let's do this quick. Animals only? No, because you have the alga. That's not an animal, so this is wrong. Animals and worms? Um, no, again, you have the alga, so this is wrong. That's not an animal, that's not a worm. It's like a plant, okay? Plants, worms, and fish? Yes, the plant. Yes, the worm. Yes, the fish. However, I don't know what a newt is. An octopus is not a fish. Okay, I wouldn't consider that a fish. That's like a, I forgot, what it is. is it a mollusk or something like that? So this is wrong. Animals and at least one other kingdom to eukaryotes. Yeah, yeah, that makes complete sense, okay? The alga is a eukaryote, okay? So process elimination, D. It's that simple, guys. That's simple. You don't need to overcomplicate things. Just be confident and say, hey, no, hey, yes. Be like, hey, MCAT, that's not right. Hey, MCAT, this is right. You got to have a little little attitude and be like, nope, nope, yeah. Okay. An adult rat is treated with a sublethal dose of TTX via injection. Which of the following is most likely to be observed? Okay. We have a sublethal dose of TTX via injection. All right. Decrease respiratory rate. That makes sense, okay, because TTX, what does it do? It binds to the fast voltage gated in sodium channels. So if it's binding to that, we're not going to have depolarization and we're not going to have um, contraction of the diaphragm. So it makes sense that this would have decreased respiratory rate. Decreased gastrointestinal motility. Maybe. Neurotoxicity in pancake. Okay, so we have to look at the table here for this. All right. So decreased gastrointestinal utility. Mm, this is just tells you where they are. Are they found in the enteric? Yeah, there's a lot here. Neurotoxicity in pancake astrocytes. Voluntary limb movement. Okay, it's definitely not voluntary limb movement. That's definitely not it. Okay. Hmm. Well, I'm looking at the information here. Okay, we either have phrenic or enteric. They both make pretty good sense here. But why would you have decreased gastrointestinal motility? It makes no sense. I don't like this question okay i'm gonna put a here but okay i'm gonna guess and put a i don't like this this is one of the random times where i'm gonna guess here i mean it makes sense your respiratory rate so we're gonna go with a here okay tetrodotoxin most likely has which of the following effects on the neuron a lower than normal resting memory potential? No. Okay, this stops depolarization. TTX, it stops depolarization. It has nothing to do with the membrane, the resting memory potential. Limited ability to propagate an action potential? Mm, yeah, if you are if you have no depolarization, you're not going to propagate the action potential. Let's see. Introduction of a plateau period after depolarization? 
again, you can't have <laughs> you can't have um you're not having depolarization at all. We don't have depolarization. We can't open those fast gated sodium channels. A shorter hyperpolarization phase, again, we're not gonna be able even to reach that repolarization phase because we're not even depolarizing first. Yeah, therefore, I'm confident the answer is B. Compared to TTXS, NA plus CS, TTRX, uh, which of the following? Okay. So if we're comparing the NS42, NS42 is the sensitive with the resistant here. Okay, they're saying, hey, unlike the resist, unlike the, I'm sorry, unlike the sensitive, the resistant has this. Okay, that's what they're trying to say here. So open at a lower membrane potential threshold value. Mm, no, we don't, we don't have that. Why would we have that? Okay, this would mean that it's more sensitive. Okay, if you are going from sensitive to resistant, this would tell me that, okay. If it was the other way around, if it was said compared to resistant, sensitive would have which of the following characteristics, then I would choose A because this is more sensitive. Okay, if you're opening at a lower memory potential threshold value, that would mean you're more sensitive. And R is not more sensitive. Okay, so A is wrong. I hope that makes sense for you guys. If it doesn't, comment it down below. Okay, a lower micromolar affinity for tetrodotoxin. Yeah, because the S was 5 to 15, it's very sensitive, it's going to be binding it with higher affinity than the R, than the resistant. All right, B makes sense. Expression in dorsal root ganglion neurons of older mammals. Okay, let's check. Here is DRG, older. No, in older DRG, we have more um, sensitive than resistant here, okay? We have more sensitive than resistant. Therefore, this one is wrong. More substantive control of the gastrointestinal system. Let's check. Enteric would be your gastrointestinal system that we're controlling here. It's the same. There's no more or less. It's pretty much the same here. So process elimination, the answer is B here. In order to obtain the data in table one, various tissues from rats were collected. What other experimental step was required? Okay, so they ran a reverse PCR. What steps are required to get your RNA for reverse PCR? Lysis of cells and removal of protein lipid components. Yes, you need to lyse that cell no matter what. Okay, so one is correct. Two, isol isolation and stabilization of genomic DNA. No, we don't care about the genomic DNA. We care about the RNA. And then from the RNA, we make cDNA. Okay, that's what three says here. Isolation, stabilization of RNA, and generation of cDNA. That's how reverse transcriptase works, okay? In reverse transcriptase, you have RNA, and we use um, reverse transcriptase to go from RNA to cDNA, all right? And this is good. Why do we even go through this process? What's the point? Okay, why can't we just look at genomic DNA? Well, if we're going from RNA to cDNA, this one doesn't have introns, okay? It doesn't have I, it doesn't have introns. If we're just looking at the genomic DNA, that doesn't really tell us much. That tells us all the DNA. It doesn't really tell us which DNA make the protein, okay? So RNA is way better looking at, okay? RNA, you go RT, reverse transcriptase, you make it to cDNA. cDNA tells us a lot more cDNA is way more specific and easier to analyze than a whole genomic DNA. Okay, so one and three is a correct answer. The answer is D here, and that's it, guys. That's exactly how you do it. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and look at 49 here because for some reason that's getting me a little, a little tricked up. Okay, let's see if we got all right. So this is 48. 48 is D. That is correct. Here's explanation if you guys would like. 49. We put. A, let's see if that's correct. Okay. Yep, that's correct. Overall choice B isn't necessarily wrong, but it is not a good answer choice as A. Yeah, that makes sense, okay? 
again. Why? Well, I don't like this because how are you supposed to decipher that? Intestinal motility is a worse answer than A. I don't like that. See, I mean, for some reason, it's more affected the respiratory rate because I guess that's more of your muscle contraction. You know, your diaphragm is always contracting because you're always breathing. So that would be more likely to be affected. That's how I kind of went at it. Okay. So, yeah, don't don't worry about this question if you got it wrong. That's a little annoying. But anyways, guys, that's pretty much it. Actually, let's keep seeing if we got them all right. All right, 50 is B. Let's see. That's how we do it. 51 is B again. That's how you do it. 52 is D, and that's how you do it. Okay, that's how you get all the questions right, guys. If you guys are interested in working one-on-one -on -one with me, I want you guys to go ahead to the comment section, click on the link, and fill out an application. Okay, you're going to book an interview with me for MCAT University. In MCAT University, I show you exactly how to hit your target score in half the time. I show you the wash, rinse, repeat process that's used with all students to hit their target score. Okay, it's pretty much you just have to do what's told in MCAT University and you will hit your target score. Like, it's proven. That's There's no if and buts about that, okay? And it's easy. Okay, it's pretty much easy. You just do what you're told to do and you just do it and you'll get the target score. And you also have access to me just in case you have any questions, anytime you'd like, schedule an interview or schedule a tutoring session with me and I'll help you through it, okay? So, hope you guys enjoyed. Comment down below what you guys think and I'll see you guys in the next video.